Hello, this is Lauren Kelly, Digital Services Librarian at Niles Main District Library. Today we'll be learning about what is the cloud. The cloud is a term that gets used a lot when folks are talking about use of technology in the internet, but sometimes it can be poorly understood or misunderstood and cause a lot of confusion. Today, what I'm going to cover is what is the cloud and also how to best utilize it. Specifically, we'll be comparing four different cloud-based file storage services. That includes Google Drive, Microsoft OneDrive, Apple's iCloud, and Dropbox. To start off, let's get a quick definition of cloud computing. I looked it up uh, in the dictionary. The definition I found is the practice of using a network of remote servers hosted on the internet to store, manage, and process data rather than on a local server or a personal computer. Now that's a pretty loaded definition and it actually even made me more confused. So let's break this down. What does that definition actually mean? What it means is that cloud computing is computing that is actually based on the internet. In the past, for instance, in the 1970s, 1980s, before the internet, all computer programs and applications ran from software that was on a physical computer or on a server within just one building. However, today, with the internet, the cloud allows us to do some computing uh, actually on the internet. So all people can access the same kinds of applications through the internet. Uh, sometimes people get the terms internet and cloud confused. What the internet is, is an actual global network of interconnected computers. The cloud uses the internet as a medium to deliver the services. So we use the internet to get uh, to the services that are on the cloud. Oftentimes, folks hear about the cloud and they imagine that it's something up in the sky. However, this isn't exactly true. This is a photo of one of Google's data centers uh, in the state of Oklahoma. It's just a very large warehouse with a ton of computer servers all hooked into the internet. And a lot of web traffic and storage um, goes through data centers such as this. It's actually pretty cool. You may be asking yourself, why do I need to use the cloud? You know, it might be confusing and you don't even really want to engage in this. However, it is incredibly useful and convenient. Uh, what this really means is that you can access data from really any device that is connected to the internet. So your information is not just tied to one computer. You can go to any computer in the world and log in and get at that data. Uh, it's synchronized between these devices through, for instance, that server room that we saw in Oklahoma, uh, really in real time. It's basically instant. This makes communication and collaboration um, a lot more efficient. Additionally, you don't need to install a lot of uh, software on your computer. For instance, um, uh, email. Uh, these days, we don't need to install a specific program to allow us to access our email. We just go on the internet and type in yahoo.com or gmail.com or whatever it is. Another real benefit of the cloud is that the information is always backed up. Uh, if I drop my computer, I don't lose my email. I can just get a new computer and then log into my email account. The fact that the information is backed up on the cloud is really very important and has saved me a lot of headaches. Even though the cloud might be a bit of a mystical concept for some, it is very likely that you are already using the cloud. I mentioned the example of email. All email is taking place in the cloud. Uh, people's emails are not just tied to one specific physical computer. Email is on the internet uh, stored in the cloud. Uh, same with a lot of social media sites, um, Facebook. You know, you might be able to log into Facebook on a phone app or visit their website. You can use any computer and go to facebook.com and access your information there. 
Another use of the cloud that um, I know a lot of folks use quite heavily is video and music streaming services. This uh, would include Netflix, Hulu. You know, these videos are streaming through the internet and the storage of them is held in the cloud. One way that the cloud can be really useful is for file storage. Instead of having all of the files that are important to me, for instance, Word documents, spreadsheets, family photos, and music recordings that I've made, instead of having those only kept on my one computer and risk getting that damaged, stolen, or broken, I can actually store these files on the cloud as a backup. The file storage is what we're going to be really going into later, comparing four different services that may be of use to you. Finally, one really great example of how folks use the cloud is for software updates. Um, Again, in the past, in the 1970s and 1980s, um, to update software on a computer, you'd actually have to install a, a disk. This may be was a series of floppy disks, the the square flat disks um, you may remember, you know, inserting 10, 12, 16 disks in order to install or update software. Then moving into the 90s, this was still happening with the CD disks to install those to update software. However, these days, um, software updates mostly happen through the cloud, through the internet. So we use the internet to get the information that's been stored on the cloud, and we can just download and install it onto the computer and uh, update the software. So it's the most up-to-date that the developers have released. So we talked about um, how to use the cloud, but what do you need to actually be able to access this? Um, you, you need four things in order to utilize some of these benefits that I'm, I'm talking about here. The first is you, you need a device. This could be a laptop a desktop computer, even a tablet or smartphone, as long as those things had access um, to an internet connection, which is the second thing. An internet connection can be through a Wi-Fi, a wireless internet connection. This is typically found in your home, um, businesses, coffee shops, and Niles Main District Library offers Wi-Fi internet. This could also be through a cell service. Uh, you may pay Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, uh, whichever company you, you pay for your cell service, this is another way to get internet to the device. Finally, it could be a wired connection, a direct cord being plugged into the computer that gives you the internet there. Uh, you also need an app or, or a web browser. So the apps are going to be installed on tablets and smartphones. You can see the little picture there of the iPhone In the corner, all those little squares are apps. You need the app to be able to access the service. Alternately, you can use um, a web browser. These are more typically used on laptops and desktops, but uh, tablets and smartphones also have web browsers. These include Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, Mozilla Firefox, Opera, or Apple Safari. Now, the real benefit... um, for you know, what is the cloud and storing files in the cloud are going to be some of these cloud-based file storage services. Today, we're going to compare four different um, options for services you could use to store files. These include Dropbox, iCloud from Apple, Google Drive, and Microsoft OneDrive. Let's start off with Dropbox. Dropbox allows you to store files such as Word documents, photos, really any type of file that you want to be able to access from any machine, from the internet, instead of just having it shared on your one device. Dropbox gives two gigabytes of storage free when you create an account with a valid email address. One great thing about Dropbox is that it's independent of any ecosystem. And what I mean by that is it's not owned by Apple or it's not owned by Google. It's its own thing, its own product. Dropbox um, has really robust sharing and collaboration tools. Um, I personally have used Dropbox to 
share family photos that we have digitized with family members. So we store all of these digitized photographs in the Dropbox and can share that folder with everyone in my family so that they can also have access to the folder and I'll see the photos in there. Uh, the service is $9.99 per month um, if you need to upgrade to more storage capacity. The $9.99 a month gets you two terabytes of storage. That's quite a lot. However, again, you, you do get the two gigabytes free when you create an account. Dropbox does integrate with Windows, uh, Apple. It also is an Android app, and it can store any type of file. You may be familiar with files such as Microsoft Word, Documents, or JPEGs, a common photo file type. Uh, but Dropbox can handle any file type and store that for you. Uh, it's really simple, uh, elegant design, uh, quite easy to use. And it can show you a little bit about Dropbox here. You can see that you can upload files, create folders in which to organize your files, and even collaborate with others. Dropbox shows you your recently viewed files. You can star items for quick access and navigate all the files that you've created or stored in Dropbox. The next service to talk about is iCloud iCloud gives you five gigabytes of storage for free with your Apple ID. Now, folks who have iPhones or Mac products are likely already using iCloud. This is a specific Apple product that allows user data to be stored in the cloud instead of tied to their specific device. To use the iCloud, you need to have an Apple ID. And again, this is part of the Apple ecosystem. A lot of folks uh, who have iPhones are using iCloud, possibly without even knowing it. Uh, this is a way to back up the information on an Apple device. For instance, on your iPhone. If you have taken some pictures or videos on your iPhone and you really don't want to lose them, uh, for instance, if you drop your phone or it gets damaged or stolen, because your photos and videos have been backed up to the iCloud, you can then access them later and even reload them onto a new device if needed. Five gigabytes gets taken up pretty quickly if you take a lot of photos and videos. So Apple offers upgrades, 99 cents a month for 50 gigabytes, 299 for 200 gigabytes, and 999 for two terabytes tends to be a pretty standard price there. $9.99 for two terabytes of content. This is very much native to Apple. Um, there is a Windows um, program that does exist, but there is no support for Android. So if you are an Apple user and are already using the iCloud, this could be a good option for you to look into and expand. If you are not an Apple user, this product is likely not for you. Uh, if you are an Apple user, though, this integrates incredibly well with the Mac and iOS devices, it syncs between the devices with ease. Here's the web version of iCloud Drive. This is where I could store files and access them via the web. You can see that you can upload files, create folders, and manage various files here. By visiting www.icloud.com, you can log in and see all the photos that you've taken on your iPhone as long as it's been set up to sync to the iCloud Drive. The next service is Google Drive. Uh, I personally use Google Drive quite a bit. I have a Google account. What that means is I have a Gmail email address, and Google is the product that gives you the most for free with the account at 15 gigabytes of free storage right out of the gate. Again, it's part of the Google ecosystem. So if you do have a Gmail address, if you do use other Google products, this could be a great option for you. One really great thing about Google Drive is how robust the sharing and collaboration tools are. You can share your files with anyone else. Uh, and if they're editable, those people can also make changes to the files. For instance, by using the products Google Docs or Google Sheets, those are Google's version of of Word and Excel. So you can collaborate on actual working documents with folks and share files. 
You can upgrade up from the 15 gigabytes for $199 a month for 100 gigabytes, $299 for 200 gigabytes, and again, $999 for 2 terabytes. That option is called Google One. If you are using Google Photos, so backing up your photos from your Android phone, for instance, into the cloud or using Google Docs or Sheets, uh, these files take up no storage in Google Drive, which I think is pretty cool. I've yet to run into the 15 gigabyte limit, and I think I'm a pretty heavy user of this service. Google Drive also tends to play well with others. It is supported both for the Windows operating system as well as the Apple operating system. It also has um, apps for both iPhone and Android. Really convenient, um, especially if you have Gmail already. I also find this product to be pretty intuitive. Um, I don't find it confusing at all. Everything's really right there in front of you. So let's take a look at what uh, Google Drive looks like. Uh, you can create a new file right there. You can also create folders that store your files. Um, you can look at files that have been shared with you, uh, recently viewed. There's also a search feature. If you forget the name of the photo or document, you can just type it right in and it should come up. Again, you can create Google Documents, like Word Docs, Sheets, and even slide presentations within Google Drive. The final product to talk about today is Microsoft OneDrive. Uh, Microsoft OneDrive is very much part of the Microsoft ecosystem. So if you are a person who is a really heavy Apple products user, this one might not be for you. You do get five gigabytes free with a Microsoft account um, just for storage. Um, you can only unlock the sharing and collaboration type tools if you upgrade to a higher level account as listed below. Those sharing and collaboration tools, though, are quite robust. Um, a lot of businesses use this product. Uh, it's great for advanced productivity at an organizational level. For this reason, it is compatible, obviously, with Windows. It, it is compatible with Apple. Um, it does have apps for all of those ecosystems. However, it really is a Microsoft product. This works seamlessly with the flagship products from Microsoft, um, Word, Excel, other Office apps such as 365 and Outlook. So this is going to be uh, much more business focused um, or for folks that are just really uh, liking the, using Microsoft. I'm going to show you what this one looks like here. Here is what Microsoft OneDrive looks like. You know, a lot of these are pretty similar. They're, they're all going to be doing the same thing storing your files in the cloud, uh, just figuring out which one's going to work for you uh, based on the content I just reviewed, price point, what kind of device you have. But as you can see here, you can create folders, you can upload files, and you can share things with others. That's all I have for you today. Uh, hopefully after viewing this demonstration, you understand what the cloud is a little bit better and feel more prepared to make a decision about how to utilize a cloud-based file storage service. If you have any questions about the content covered in today's program, feel free to email us at dsdesk at nileslibrary.org. Again, that is dsdesk at nileslibrary.org. To learn more about cloud-based services and other ways to utilize the tools discussed in this video, Visit some of Niles' main district library's online digital resources, such as lynda.com. You can find the information on our website at www.nileslibrary.org research. Have a good one.